Dan. Sasha, what do you have up for today? All right. I have a few a few news bits that I would like to discuss. I simply share the first one. Um, so let me just also quickly see what I can do here. And then we discuss this for in, in, in just a quick second. Um, yeah, here we go. Let me share it. I hope that works. All right. So you can see here uh, an article on the on BBC talking about what just happened. Um, at the French Open in Tenomi Osaka from the French Open um, because she said she's always forced to do all the media interviews and press conferences and talk to the media during tournaments. And since she already has anxiety issues, that just adds to it. So she doesn't want this. Then the organizer said, well, if you don't do the mandatory press meetings, press conferences, we will fine you. And then she said, well, okay, but I don't want, want all the attention for this on myself right now. I'm withdrawing. And so my question just is, what, what, what do you think about this? Because when I grew up, I always ask myself, and maybe this was an indicator that I would study media later on, I ask myself, how can you during a World Cup, European Qual Cups, NBA playoffs, how can you talk to the press right after a game, after you lost, after you won, whatever? Like, you have to answer all the same questions over and over again. How did you feel? Why didn't you win? What's your biggest weakness? Why did you suck today? Um, so I, I, I wonder, what do you think? Or should athletes be happy because the media gives them the attention and that's how they make money, right? So don't depress. That's how you get your money. So I wonder which side would you be taking? Well, fun fact, I used to want to be a sports journalist back in the day. I used to be all into all those kind of sports. But yeah, actually, the reason why I didn't want to go into sports journalism was precisely because of the, the issue that you just mentioned is how many different ways can you ask the same question? And that's usually what sporting is. And I think there used to be a meme there that basically kind of was a parody of sporting interviews, which was basically so the, the kind of uh, reporter says, so how is your sporting? And then the athlete basically is just saying sporting, sporting some more, sporting. And basically that by itself is kind of frustrating. But if you multiply that by the five other reporters who are all trying to get their two cents in, you're just thinking to yourself, you know, uh, well, what's really the point? But I guess the other key thing is, you know, other than, of course, the repetitive repetition, I said that twice just to emphasize that that's what sports reporting is. That's what sports reporters do. They create conflict between different athletes to try to build up more of a story, build up the tension before these competitions. But then they also insist on, as you said, athletes talking about when they won, when they lost and all these kind of other things that we're talking about. So in terms of my reaction to it, I mean, I'm actually not that surprised because I remember when she won her first tournament, actually. I remember when she won her first tournament, she looked super uncomfortable, like super uncomfortable. Like she, I could tell she did not want to answer the question. She was pausing, she was hesitating. So I'm not surprised that this all happened. But I think on the other side, one of the things I kind of, well, this is also the issue with tennis is that it is an individual sport. You can't, you know, maybe be the less talkative person like in a professional team sport, like football or American soccer. So it's all on you. But the one thing I do hope that uh, Naomi Osaka is going to be able to do is hopefully show that she can come back because she is a brilliant tennis player. She is a really brilliant tennis player, and I think if she can get a little bit more comfortable with being in the spotlight, she can do a lot to kind of bring awareness, not just to various social issues, but also to how we can deal with mental health, because I don't want her to like just shrink away from the spotlight and refuse to play tennis anymore because she can't deal with the limelight, because I think it kind of sets 
a bit of a bad example for kind of the younger generation because I mean, I'm not kind of um, making light of what mental illness actually is. Mental illness is something that a lot of people deal with. So uh, one key thing that I think I hope to see from her is I hope that she does bounce back and she comes back and becomes a bit more confident because, you know, at the end of the day, you're just answering questions. It's not a super stressful kind of environment because from last I checked, I know it's kind of changed a little bit, but I don't think that we get super duper political in these conversations. Like if part of the conversation was bringing up, oh, what's happening in Israel, what's happening in Palestine, I would be very uncomfortable as well. But I think that this is something that she can bounce back from. And I hope she does because, you know, this, these kind of issues, everyone's got to get help. Okay. Sometimes we kind of don't emphasize enough that people should get help when they're feeling these kinds of things. So I hope she bounces back and she comes back because I would hate for her to stop playing tennis because she's not comfortable with all this attention and all these interviews. It's kind of, um, well, we like to talk about jobs and things we don't like about jobs. This is just part of the job, but it is going to give her a big platform if she can start to uh, utilize this. So, yeah, I understand where she's coming from, but I hope, you know, she does learn how to um, kind of deal with this limelight because that's what a professional athlete is all about. And it gives them so many more opportunities to uh, make changes related to the celebrity activism we were talking about. It is good that athletes show that they care more than just their endorsements. So hope she gets the help. And I hope this is, you know, just one of the few tournaments that she misses. Yeah, I, I agree. So I, I, I'm torn between both sides, but I also think she has the potential to use her platform for something good because she's an amazing tennis player. And I remember also when she started winning the first tournament, she was so happy, like on the court, but then off the court, she was really tense. Like, I don't know what I'm going to say now. And she got invited to Oprah and whatnot. And she was really like, ah, I don't know what to do. So, but now that she's an established superstar, I hope that she, I know, gets some time off relax and finds a way to bounce back to then use the platform to maybe be an advocate for mental health issues that just shines the light on 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 people who can't do that by themselves so i hope that this is something she she actually ends up doing then and i think she's still young so i, I think she can figure this out with the right hopefully right people family by her side i think that's something that she that she can do i think it happened very fast for her if i remember yeah. correctly like she went from a relatively unknown player to a very, very good, very, very well-known player. So mm -hmm. I think that would have been like a hard transition for anyone really. Um, yeah, interesting stuff. And also, by the way, feel free to leave your thoughts on Naomi Hosaka and how we deal with these kinds of uh, mental health issues because they're prevalent. They kind of exist everywhere. So we should not be suddenly thinking that, you know, actually, and I think that you've seen this kind of information before, John Sasha, mental health issues are increasing, not just because of the COVID pandemic, but also they've been increasing even before. So these are things that we should be keeping in mind. Yeah, mental health is nothing to take to take uh, like not serious to take too easy. I think that's it's a big issue, serious issue, and we shouldn't be making fun of it. We, sh we should really look into it and, and yeah, give everybody the the help they they need. I think and uh, if then a famous player, famous a celebrity helps to shine a light on this issue, I think that's just something positive in the end. Yeah, empathy, key thing. A lot of people talking about empathy.